boy. Feel good, mijo? <laughs> You're like, hell yeah. Let's see. So in this position, I'm not really looking to give him a perfect brush, but I'm kind of just settling him in, getting him relaxed, um, so that I can feel more comfortable when I start massaging him. Right, Mijo? Yeah? Yeah? That feel good? That feel good? Like that me home. Does that feel good? <laughs> I'm sorry, you gotta be careful. Watch where you're moving. Right. Good boy. Good boy, me home. <clears throat> the one way that I get into the massaging is to use the brush to Start stroking his back, which he loves. You know, if anyone takes a fingers down the center of your back, down your spine, it feels good, it's stimulating. Uh, so that kind of signals to him that maybe we'll get there. That is, we'll get to the massage. And only because that's just been our general routine once I start stroking his spine with the brush, the massage is going to come next. Let me see. I'm proud to show you his ears, which are clean. I cleaned them the other week, finally, which I hadn't done in a while. It doesn't always occur to me. <clears throat> All right. You ready to work on your spine? What I do is I take my hands. This is something I learned from another video. Hold them like this as opposed to using individual fingers. And <clears throat> see, look, at he's ready for it. He's ready for the massage for sure. So I'm taking my hands. I tend to focus around the joints. These are things I've said before in other videos. Um, I'll try to elaborate a little more here. But then even I try to focus on the joints wherever a muscle meets bone, whenever, whenever a tendon meets bone or muscle, right? Um, because that's just what I know about from my own appreciation of massage. Those are the spots that tend to need work. 
He's still not always up for me grabbing his paws. I like to massage the pads if he'll let me. I never grab, I never pull. <laughs> My opinion is he's entitled to tell me, to let me know, to signal to me what is feeling good to him and what isn't. And I just kind of go with the flow. If he pulls, that's fine. I'll get back to it. Maybe not right away, but I'll get back to it because I know that in the end, he's going to like how it feels. Okay. So I'll get back to that paw, and in the meantime, I'll keep going to his spine. For your information, I saw a video on YouTube, I think it was by, actually I couldn't tell you who it was by, but a prominent dog trainer who was seeing someone, a massage therapist for dogs to teach her how to do it and they use like a giant bull mastiff or something, a huge dog that just kind of gave itself up once the, the therapist started massaging. Just totally opened up his belly, uh, gave up his legs and his paws. He ends up on his back, actually, <laughs> while the therapist works on his belly. Um, look for that one. It was helpful to me, gave me a little guidance. So what I'm doing here is on the back knee, his high knee here on the left side. Again, just pressing with my hands like this and rubbing. And I'm not just uh, lightly rubbing, but putting some pressure. And see, clearly he did not mind it. He knows what's up. He likes it. And... For that reason, I'm going to keep doing it, <clears throat> as long as he's around. I'm pretty confident, after having been doing this a little more frequently this week, because he was struggling after a longer walk, um, I'm confident that tonight he will pass out, just be completely exhausted, the way that we tend to be after a good massage. Actually, the first thing we'll do after the massage, I'm sure, is go outside, take him to go to the bathroom. Um, that also is <laughs> consistent with my own experience of a massage. You know, you're really working all this stuff out, and then you gotta go. So, I'll leave the camera on after I finish massaging for now, brushing for now, and you'll see that I'm very confident I'll set him down and he'll go straight to the door because he knows that that's what we do after a massage. And he has to go after a massage. He really does. Does that feel good, Mule? Yeah, you like that. <laughs> Good boy. You like that, Mio? Let's see. See if we can get on the other side of your spine. Is that okay? Or what? Can I do your belly? Can I do your belly? Can I rub your belly? Yeah. Yeah. As far as the belly goes, 
uh, I'm using lighter pressure. In the video I mentioned earlier, she was doing a lot of stroking with her hands, like this. Uh, just and um, just lighter pressure because you don't want someone sticking you in your belly. And I'm never gonna do anything to make this guy uncomfortable if I can help it. Right, Nemo? <laughs> You're such a good boy, huh? I know. You're such a good boy, JW. I don't know what I would do without you. So, <laughs> I grabbed his uh, right shoulder, started putting pressure there, and that's when he laid down. Tells me that, you know, that's a spot that needs work and he's ready for it. And there you go. Just because of the way the camera is positioned and the way that I'm seated, I'm not sure I'll be showing you the other side, but we'll see. Again, I'm gonna, as I get to the other side though, I'm focusing on um, that side of his spine, going down all the way. <laughs> and clearly, again, JW loves it. Don't you know? Yeah. If you didn't already know, uh, <clears throat> JW and I have been together since he was four months old. I got him from a Kazon to breeder in Texas. And uh, I wanted a Kazon from the beginning, although I did look for shelter dogs. I couldn't find one that was going to be suitable for what I knew my needs would be personally and professionally at the time. I was working you know, 60 hours a week. I got a new house, I was getting involved in a new city, and I happened to know, because my aunt had a couple of Kazondon uh, when I was growing up, I knew what their temperament was, I knew what their physical requirements were in terms of uh, exercise and such, and I knew the grooming, that was never a concern for me, I knew that I would be able to take care of him no matter what, as far as the grooming went. So we started training on the grooming literally from day one. I would take the back of his brush. Uh, we use a Bass A8. Don't know if you can see that. Upside down. In any event, uh, we didn't always use that. I wish we had because it's the best brush we've ever used. But, uh, oh, I started training him literally day one to, to get familiar with the brush. So I would take the back of the brush and stroke him with it like this, just to get him used to it being around, letting him know that he was not, he didn't have any reason to be threatened by it when it showed up. I think because we did such a good job of training him early on. He's really comfortable with it. Uh, if you've seen any of our other videos, as soon as he hears the bag that I put his uh, brushings into, he comes to me. He presents himself to be brushed. I'm willing to acknowledge that some of that might just be his temperament and not just the job we did working together to train him to take the brush properly and, and, a, and a good brushing. He's always been this good, this easy. I cannot take all the credit. <laughs> I 
from JWU is wondering, uh, who are you talking to? Does that feel good, mijo? Yeah. Let's work on that spot again, that shoulder, see if that works. You like that? Yeah. Oh, I love you. <laughs> okay, let me get this again. All right. Let's see. All right. Go ahead. Lay down. Come on. Lay down. Lay down. Good boy. So, since he opened up that spot for me, I'm going to do a little more work on his shoulder. See if we can get a better perspective on <clears throat> his eyes, whatever he's planning to do, however he's reacting. There we go. You ready? Let's try that again. Okay, lay down. Go ahead, lay down. Lay down. Top board, you know. You don't want to lay down? Okay, that's fine. Again, I never force anything because I know at one point or another he will give me access. At one point or another, if he doesn't get it, I'll take it and it'll get done one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was uh, saying earlier that I always wanted a Kazan. Right. It's totally true. Uh, I just didn't know that I'd be getting this one. He's really special. I know I've had dogs. I grew up with dogs. But... And like I said, I grew up with uh, a couple of Kazan pets in the family that I knew well, actually, that I grew up with. Uh, but, um, yeah, I didn't expect this. Just even the, uh, the bonding that we go through in doing this stuff. That's just something I never imagined. I'm so grateful. <laughs> okay, yeah. As far as the head goes, again, whatever flesh meets bone, that's what I'm here for. Gently, but with pressure. You don't want that anymore? Okay, that's fine. Why don't you lay down? Thank you. Thank you. So, here we go. Back to the shoulder. I generally try to be more systematic about <clears throat> both the brushing and the massage itself, but I have him here in a different location. This is actually our living room couch. And again, I'm trying to show you. So I gotta worry about lighting and camera angles and stuff, as opposed to just the, <clears throat> the brushing and the massage. Otherwise, let me see. Be all over this, which is killing me right now. It looks messy, and I don't like that. This is a very light brushing. I'm obviously brushing against 
the uh, growth of the hair. I think it's called back brushing. I'm sure I don't know, but that's how I do it. Once I've done that, then I can pull it back. So some more back brushing. And then brush it back in the proper direction. You want to lay down, please? Lay down, you I'm almost done. Good boy. No? That's okay. <laughs> That's all right, Miho. Oh, on the subject of brushes, I only use this pin brush and a comb. I know other people use slickers for mats, but I don't ever let JW get mats. Um, <clears throat> but that's frankly because he's not interested, it, it, I should say, he doesn't get mats because he's not interested in water, he's not interested in rolling around in dirt, and even if he was, I probably wouldn't let him. Maybe I would, I don't know. But, because he doesn't, he really doesn't, and I, uh, because of his activity and because of the frequency with which I'm brushing, um, I don't need a slicker. Historically, I did use one, but I found that it tore the hair in a way that I didn't like. Um, it often hurt him. And you can see that I'm not about a, a technique or a, a, a technique that would cause him any kind of pain. Even with a pin brush, I'm not going to do something that's going to hurt him. I imagine that a groomer who is literally, I suppose, losing money with every extra minute on a, on a dog would want to be quicker about it because they have to do the whole thing as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. I don't have to do that, which is why I'm a little more forgiving in terms of letting him turn away, push away, because I'm always going to get whatever it needs to get done on his coat. I'll get it. So that's what we're going to do for now. And JW and I are grateful for your attention. We hope that you have learned a little bit and got to see a little of uh, what a good boy this guy is, right? You know, right? You're a very good boy. Thanks, everybody. Over here. Is that a good boy? <laughs> Thanks, everyone.